Hello there. What is going on, everybody? Today, I'm coming to you with something a little different. This is not a Star Wars review. This is a collectibles review of the Ninja Turtles, the full set, the GameStop exclusive. These are basically the same ones that you could have found at San Diego Comic-Con, but instead they're individually sold. And we've got Raphael, Michelangelo, Leonardo, and Donatello. And whew, this is really cool. I do want to remind you guys there is still time to enter the latest giveaway. I am giving away a Star Wars Force FX lightsaber in the form of an Amazon gift card. All you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment. Um, there's more details for that on crabock.com, but that is running for about another two weeks. So you have time to enter to win that. This is just amazing. Look at the backs of these. We're going to, oh my goodness. I, dude, do you guys remember this movie? This movie was life-changing for me. I was in love with the Ninja Turtles and when they finally made this movie and I was able to go see it for the first time, I don't know, I was maybe eight, something like that, eight or nine. Uh, I, I just, I, I was blown away when Raphael lost his sigh and said, damn, I was like, oh, there's cursing in this movie and I'm allowed to see it. Oh man, I'm so thrilled. Like the likenesses are just insane. There's a little scuffing on the box. This one was loose at uh, GameStop, and uh, these were apparently pre-order only, uh, and they didn't make enough if you didn't pre-order. I don't know if they, um, I heard that they were talking about making some more, but they only had this one set. I grabbed all four. Uh, they were about 23 or so dollars each. It was about 100 bucks for the whole four pack, which I think is a very good value considering these, uh, you know, have gotten really good reviews, at least the SDCC ones have, and I'm just, you know, I don't have any Ninja Turtles figures yet, so they will hopefully go well along next to my Jedi Knights and Thundercats and all of that. So let's go ahead and take these guys out of the box. All right, you guys, here they are, and they are amazing. I am honestly just initially blown away by the just incredible attention to detail and, and sculpting and paint on these things. They're really, really impressive. Uh, to start things off, I'm just gonna talk about the accessories that they each come with, and then we'll look at each one individually. Uh, Raf, uh, each, each of them come with two hands, a slice of pizza, and an alternate headband. Raf comes with these two uh, hands that are kind of in a grasping way. Um, Mikey comes with these two thumbs up hands. Leonardo comes up with like knife hands, like you go that way, you know, and Donatello comes with the finger point. There we go. That way. So pretty cool accessories and they all appear to be hot swappable. So if you've got all four, you can swap the hands however you want and you can have Raph give a thumbs up or, or however you want to do it. They are also going to come with a slice of pizza. Now this is uh, the same type of pizza for all of them. Um, you can create a half a pie here, but this is not the most appealing looking pizza, but this is like basically the same type that they had in the movie. So it's more movie accurate if we compare that to maybe like the Spider-Man pepperoni pizza, which maybe looks a little better and is folding a little more naturally. This is the pizza that uh, ended up basically on Splinter's head once they sliced and diced it in the air. And they each all come with an alternate uh, tie off, you know, bandana, eye mask, uh, excess here in the back basically if you want it to it's all going over one shoulder if you want it to go over the other shoulder then you can pop this in and pop out the other one and then change up the uh the look of that not really necessary for that but uh you know what i'll take it that's it's nice to have a little bit of extra stuff so let's go ahead and we'll start from uh right to left so we're gonna get raf first uh, i mean dude they all have different faces too this is not just the same turtle redone on all of them. He has the angry look. He has that look where he's like, oh, damn, I lost a sigh. So actually, technically, I guess I sh he should have only one sigh, right? And uh, he's uh, he's shaking his fist at the world. Oh, I lost a sigh. Damn. <laughs> but no, man, this is just this is just so cool. Look at the, the belt, the shell. We're just going to look up close here. The sigh itself actually has some really nice work on it. You know, a lot of times the weapons are only monocolored, so they really did a lot of work with that side to make it look good. But really, the, the look, look at the, the spots all over the arms and this texturing here too, which is really pretty. The, the arm bands. You know, look at the shell. There's scratches on the shell, right? 
little belt studs on their belts. Different color right there for their like membrane in there. Like they didn't have to do that, but they really, really went so far above and beyond here. Great shading in the lines in there. And as we get down, we see the which those knee pads look great too. And then our feet got toenail paint uh, like a lot of the places a lot, not everybody does toenails and makes the toenails actually a different shade that's just incredible um articulation is going to be fairly similar for all of them so i'm going to do that at the end but they have pretty good articulation too let's look at mikey all right michelangelo definitely my favorite he's got a happy-go-lucky look on him kiawabunga Bossa Nova, Chevy Nova. Oh man, dude, I freaking loved this movie. Honestly, tell me if you remember that that T U R T L E power. Oh man, that song, Partners in Crime. Look at the nun. We're gonna look at the weapons first. And these nunchucks are actually cloth goods in between them. Although it is a little hard here. I don't know if it's like wire or like it, it feels like cloth that has some hairspray sprayed on it. But this does give them full flexibility. Uh, so they can move around all they want, but this is something you'll probably want to be really careful with because I feel like This is gonna break one of these days You know, and I will be sad if that happens So I will be very very careful with these and he comes with two sets, which is good because that's what he uses he uses two sets um, He's got a tongue in there too. You can see his tongue kind of like like they painted his tongue even though you can barely see it like, that's how you know there's something. Look at those eyes. I mean, he's got the big bright eyes. Raph's eyes were squinty. Dude, this dude is oh, I'm in love, man. This is just the greatest. Is it possible to be in love with a toy? Maybe I'm, maybe it's TMI. All right. And he doesn't have, see, like, look, the shells are different. He doesn't have the shells. He doesn't get into as many fights as Raph does. He's not out there fighting with Casey Jones and stuff, right? Oh man, I want to go watch this movie again. I'm I think I'm buying this movie. I think the kids need to watch it too. Oh my goodness. All right, let's go look at the belt. I mean, pretty much the same level of detail, but different things like the knee pads are scuffed a little differently here. Right? Maybe he fell off skateboarding a little bit more. Right? And of course we have the, the feet. All right, that's Mikey. Really, a lot of the difference boils down to the head, but there are subtle other differences as well, and that's really, really a cool aspect. Leonardo, the leader of the group, even though the song had it wrong. Dude, like that that T-U-R-T-L-E power song said Raphael was the leader of the group. I'm like, nope, not even close. This is the leader. He's and he's 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 determined. We lost Master Splinter. Oh my goodness, it's freaking. Oh this, and his his belt is different. You know he's got he's got the double, the double uh, overalls there, holding the swords too. And that's the other thing too is they all have holders for their weapons. You know they go in there perfectly. That's so awesome. Look at this. Or do I have it the wrong way? There we go. He's just so nice. And of course, you can pull these out. You can pop that out. It comes out nice and easily if you want to put the other one in and have it going the other way. Probably not easy to do this while I'm holding him. Let's try it with that hand instead. See how easy it is to get these in here. It's not the easiest thing. Oh, goodness. So think long and hard before you want to. All right, I got it. it there we go. So, all right, went in there, real tight fit. And now he's on the other side. All right, but yeah, um, as far as his shell, he's kind of got the cleaner shell as well. Um, a little more scuffing on the on the, sh on the knee pads. And you know, the funny thing is like, there's different leg patterns, right? This is Mikey, Mikey's leg. This is Raph's leg. Different spotting patterns, so none of them are the same. Which is like, that's just so cool. All right, let's take a look at Donnie. All right, here is Donnie. And Donnie's actually, I believe, the one who said Chevy Nova, not Michelangelo. He said Cowabunga. But yeah, 
goodness. Oh man, he is so cool. He's got that that look too, that that smirk. Mm-hmm. Really nice looking eyes there. And I will admit to you guys that growing up, Donatello was always my favorite Ninja Turtle. Not just because he was the inventor, but also, and here's his bow staff. Primarily because of the bow staff. In all the video games, he was the best character to be because he had the longest reach. Like, especially that NES Ninja Turtle game. Like, thumbs up if you remember the NES Ninja Turtle game. Oh, look at that. It goes right there in the back. It's so cool. Like, he was definitely, he had that bow, and when you hit, it would boom, boom. It was, it was so great. Let's see how we can swap out a hand real quick. I mean, they all, they come out pretty easily. Let's put one in there. Okay, there we go. And that's, that, they all go in real simple. And they also have the wrist articulation. So speaking of articulation, let's do some articulation. All right, so the heads look up real good. Real good up, real good up. Really, really good far down. That's an incredible range of motion for the heads. We got some side to side. Side to side is amazing. We can spin them, of course. So just a, like one of the best head joints ever. For shoulders, they are going to not go up super far. They're going to go up about about that far. Uh, but they do have full swivel and a hinge joint as well. So you can still get a whole lot of, come on, come on this way. You can get a, still get a decent range of motion there. The arms, uh, you have a single jointed elbows, but you have uh, a swivel here. And, oh no, you have double jointed. I'm sorry, they're double jointed elbows. Uh, but they, the elbow pad is gonna interfere with it a little bit. So you can actually get, you can get them really far bent. You just have to kind of work this a little bit and get this out of the way, but they can go in pretty far. Um, you gotta work on it a little bit. Wow, double jointed elbows is great, really cool. Um, of course, our wrists have a hinge and we have swappable hands as well as spinny hands. So a lot of, a lot of motion right there. Um, and instead of an ab joint, you do have like a, a whole torso rotation inside the shell, which is super cool. You can dance, dance the bossa nova. All right, um, legs, we can go out pretty far. Oh, goodness gracious, look at that. That's incredible. Um, now kicking forward, they can kick pretty far forward. Uh, the shell does inhibit them going back, though, so they can't really go back very far unless you pull it out sideways a little bit. Uh, but if you want them to go straight back, they cannot do that. But they can go pretty far forward. You have double-jointed legs, or knees, rather, so you can get the knees to go back. But again, the pad is going to interfere with that. Uh, puts a little stress on there, so you can have them do about a 90 degrees, though, and then, and then the uh, ankles are going to have that joint there as well as ankle pivot, which is awesome. So you can actually have them kneeling down, you know, in sadness for Master Splinter, but incredible articulation. Uh, and here is the whole gang chowing down on some pizza. I am just really, really blown away by how amazing these figures are. They're just so poseable and they have so much life to them uh, just for all the subtle things for the the head being able to cant to the side to make Raph look confused instead of angry for Leo being able to look solemn instead of determined for Donatello looking confused or, or silly instead of um, you know instead of a, uh, intellectual and Mikey always just looks super super happy I mean I and, and the hands can either either grip this pizza or you can swap them out to be able to hold somebody or to like the knife hands for example like like you can have him holding something or you can have him giving somebody a hug you know like like when he finally warms up to Raph at the end of the movie and they kind of make their peace <sighs> I just blown away by these figures let's do some comparisons all right now these figures do measure up at just under uh, about five and three quarter inches tall each um, yeah just under six inches, which you would think puts them in scale with the six inch figure line. Uh, for comparison, here they are next to a Gamorrean guard from the Star Wars Black series, who is certainly, <laughs> well, he's uh, a little bit shorter, but I think he's supposed to be shorter. And here they are next to Luke Skywalker, who is 
definitely shorter than them, but he is a little short to be a stormtrooper. Here they are in it, next to Darth Vader, who's going to be a little bit taller, and he is about the same height, if not uh, just a little bit taller. This is the uh, Walgreens exclusive Electroshock Darth Vader, and here they are with R2-D2, because he's a uh, little, and now you get some <laughs> comparison of their relative size to other six-inch figures. And here they are next to Panthro and Lino from the Thundercats, matching uh, similar weapon styles, Nunchuck versus Nunchuck and Sword versus Sword. Uh, these are in a similar scale, so they do uh, certainly match up together, but the, uh, the production style is very different between the two. And as big of a fan as I am of Thundercats, they just simply don't even come close. They're not even in the same ballpark as these figures over here, as far as quality and realisticness. Granted, these are based off of a movie and these are based off of a cartoon, so a better approximation would be to get the new cartoon uh, series ones and compare those, but uh, since I had them, I figured I would go ahead and do that comparison. Here is Leonardo explaining the situation to Raph, who doesn't look amused. So overall, I think these are probably the best figures I may have ever picked up. Uh, they're just amazing in pretty much every conceivable way that I could have hoped. They totally exceeded my expectations, uh, especially for the price point. I would have easily paid 40 or even $50 per figure after seeing just how amazing they are. And the fact that they're only like MSRP at like 23 bucks or $22.99 each was just amazing. You, know, you can only get these through GameStop or uh, potentially eBay if you want to uh, try and find them on there. Or if you can get the SDCC version that has the big diorama, you can go with that as well. Uh, but everything down to the texture, to the paint, to the eyes, especially the eyes, the weapons, the sculpting, the articulation, all the extra little poses just from being able to angle the heads differently. Uh, it just totally recaptures the magic for me for the 1990 movie. Uh, and it's it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's really amazing. I feel like I'm reliving my childhood all over again with these. And they're wonderful probably the best figures I've ever purchased. So that's what I have to say about it. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more collectible reviews, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Uh, generally, I do Star Wars stuff in uh, overall, so if you are new here, um, board gaming and Star Wars stuff, uh, but I do collectibles as well, and I may be doing a couple more action figures as certain particularly good ones come out. I do have my eye on the Hasbro Overwatch series as well. That is going to be coming out soon, so... Stay tuned for those whenever they do come out sometime later this year. All right, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.